Hi there, everybody. Welcome to the ThermalWorks barbecue patio. I'm Chef Martin. Uh, we're glad to have you back. Today we're bringing the heat with Lene Oxley Loop of Sugar's Barbecue. And we've got some killer plate ribs here. Uh, and that makes me very excited. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's going to happen with these. Absolutely. So these are one of my favorite cuts of beef. These are beautiful beef plate ribs. Uh, they're fatty and marbled and beefy and they're perfect for the grill, the smoker. And today we're really not going to do much to them. We're just going to take care of the uh, membrane in the back a little bit, okay. throw some seasoning on them, throw them on the pit and then kind of walk away for a little while and then we'll do some other stuff. That sounds great. Um, and, and so for those of you that are wondering what's, what, what these are, if you don't know, uh, these are plate ribs. These would be short ribs, depending on how you cut them up. They are not beef back ribs. That's a whole different, well, it's not a different animal. It's a whole different cut of meat. Uh, but these are, these are fantastic. You got a nice thick cushion of meat on there. So uh, how are we going to season them? So real simple. Well, first, what we're going to do is we're going to um, take care of the membrane in the back. Okay, yeah, let's so do You can do one of two things. You could just leave this the way, the, the way it is. Mm -hmm. You can uh, trim the membrane down. That's what I do. Uh, and, then, and then you can go ahead and season. So let's do that first. And then I'll get you on the seasoning and we'll, okay. uh, we'll do it together. So Great. I'm going to move this over here. Yeah. And real super simple, guys. All you're doing, nice sharp knife. Sharp knife is your friend. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to, and the, these are really tough. You can peel this. I'm not going to peel the entire thing, but I'm just, all I'm going to do is just shave on the bone. So you're basically getting rid of some silver skin there and yep. some and some of that really tough beef fat that Absolutely. doesn't as well. Yep. The, 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 the low and slow approach to these beef ribs on the grill is going to really take care of a lot of this fat and connective tissue. So you're going to be fine. And then we'll trim this. And then I think we're good. I really don't go crazy. So that's pretty much it. Okay. That's, so that's this just, could be, that is simple. Yep. Yeah. This will be ready for the seasoning. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one too real quick. And you really do need a sharp knife to do this. Don't even attempt this with a dull knife. You're not going to get anywhere. Nope. And you're going to, you'll end up cutting yourself and that's just not a yep. good thing. So we've got some oil here and then we're just going to apply a little bit of that to kind of give it a sticky coat, just something for things to adhere to. I'm going to go try to keep one hand clean here. that and some Worcestershire just a little bit of that right yep do you like to put this on uh, in this order or do you have a preference for either way putting it's on fine. A different order? it doesn't matter whatever you grab first some Worcestershire sauce, sauce is beef's best friend this is perfect yeah. and guys you can do this a, a day ahead of time easy now a lot of people always ask us in our videos uh, what pellets we use uh, today we're just use, like any pellets you want are going to be fine this is beef hickory goes well with beef oak is great with beef um, i think we actually have a, a cherry and something else blend in there today so it's a char cherry i believe so it's really cool and yeah. cherry is beautiful on beef yeah it really is one of my favorite woods to cook with get the ends here just a little bit it smells good already it does that rub mixed with the Worcestershire is just such a good flavor combination. Oh yeah, I can tell from here. There used to be Worcestershire powder in there, but I took it out because it was clumping up more mm. and it was just sticking. Now it's got a little bit more free flowing abilities. So now just we'll- a little, Just a little salt, cause that, yeah. So, so we're just gonna do a little salt here cause this has got, there's some salt in the, in the rub. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit in there to draw, draw on that. And a little bit more black pepper. Oh yeah. Man, these are uh, already, they already making smell me hungry. Good, huh? Yeah, they they already smell good. They look great. Let's uh, let's uh, put these on. Is that all? That's I think it, that right? that's all we need to do. And again, you can do this the night before if you want. Wrap them in plastic, throw them in the refrigerator, and you're good to go the next morning or whenever. Uh, put them on. And uh, so we're looking at about five hours at about 275 degrees. Okay. Uh, we're we're aiming for a temperature. Uh, internal temperature between 198 and 200, and I think we're going to okay. be in good shape. That's great. So 198 to 200, we're going to use uh, uh, the Smoke X4 for this. 
we're going to keep an eye on our pit temp uh, with one probe and we're going to keep an eye on uh, we're going to have a probe for each rack of ribs so we're not guessing on anything there um, and I guess let's go to the grill and put them on let's yeah? do it all right all right and we will probe those inside We'll set those alarms and uh, we'll come back in a couple hours. Perfect. We've got the ribs cooking, so uh, we're gonna work on this uh, citrus ancho gravy yes. uh, that you were talking about. Yes. We've got all the ingredients assembled yep. here. So uh, why don't you give me the rundown of what's gonna happen Absolutely. and I'll start like preparing some ingredients. Sure, so, okay. So the ingredients essentially are these uh, ancho chilies, which are basically uh, dry poblano chilies. So they're not hot. Uh, but they give a really nice earthy flavor to the sauce. These are the basic components of the sauce. We have a uh, white onion that we're gonna peel and quarter. We also have some peeled garlic cloves, beautiful garlic cloves. Now these elements are gonna go into a hot skillet and then we're gonna go ahead and char these. We want a good nice char because the char is gonna work with all these other ingredients and it's gonna provide, and we're gonna blend the whole thing together and make a beautiful sauce that's gonna go great with the beef ribs that are smoking right now. And the beef ribs are looking really, really good right now. So, so. are we going to put any oil in the pan with those or nope. is it a dry, dry hot skillet? We're going to go dry hot skillet. Uh, cast iron is good. If you've got a flat top, that's fine. Uh, if we, here's what happens. If you put any oil in it, it's going to start to cook. Okay. It's going to start to fry. You Up won't inside. get that okay. char. Gotcha. You want a dry hot skillet. Uh, don't use your best skillet for this uh, because you are going to char it up. <laughs> if you've got an older one, that's fine. You're going to leave it on the, uh, on the fire. Also, if you can do this outside, it's going to be great. Or if you've got a really good ventilation system it's in your a kitchen, smoky. it's going to get a little smoky. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so uh, people sometimes look at me screw when I do this. We've, I've just zested the orange that using a so veggie. Right it smells amazing. And these long strips, um, if you wanted, you could uh, slice these up with a knife. You could uh, julienne it. You could make it really small. But since we're going to be throwing this whole thing in the blender later, is this okay just like this? They're perfect, absolutely. And you get so much zest off an orange, and only, I mean, it took me like, what, 10 seconds to do that. Yep. It's the way to go. Yeah, and with this, the, the, with the sauce, the earthy tones of the sauce, we've got the garlic, the onion, we've got the chili, we also have some cumin, we have some Mexican-style okay. oregano, Mexican oregano, we've Good got stuff. some tomatoes, the beef stock, of course, some salt. All these are going to work together with the citrus, and it's going to make a really nice... Uh, flavor boom. This is just gonna like brighten up, pull up all yep. those those dark flavors. Yep. Cool. It's gonna be awesome. So uh, you wanna slice that onion yep. and then we'll move over to the grill. We're just gonna run a knife through it and just quarter it or eighth it rather. And then that's it. You want these uh, large chunks because if they're too small, uh, they're gonna burn. Okay. Uh, and oh, sorry, they're gonna, oh, they're gonna cook and we don't want them to just cook all their in, in its We their just entire. want a nice surface char yep. basically. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yep. So all those right. are good. Well, let's uh, move on over to the skillet then. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna get this uh, skillet on a medium high heat, and then I'm gonna start uh, to uh, char these veggies. So we're gonna do that. Great. There we go. There you go, that's good. All right. There's the get onions. Get some onions on. And again, dry skillet, uh, no oil at all. Great. And we'll get the chilies. And we've uh, previously de-seeded and de-stemmed these chilies as much as we can. It's a little hard when they're dry, but I mean, just be careful, you'll be fine. And, and some garlic. We've got about eight cloves of garlic there. This is already starting to smell good. Yeah. All right. All right. All right, here's the deal. You don't want to walk away from this. You want to keep an eye on it, um, but it, you really want to let these veggies settle because uh, it's very important because you just want to make a good char on one side of them. If you start manipulating them around, stirring them around, you're not going to really get that char. So these are in good shape. Oh my gosh, it's already starting to smell really, really good. So yeah. we're in good shape for right now. About how long does this process take, would you say? You know, I think in a medium, medium high setting, I think maybe 15 minutes at the most, I think. Okay. I think we're good. All right. So we're just, Flipping these over, you can see we've got a little char on one side there. Um, the chilies are blistering in some places. That's exactly what we want to have happening, right? Absolutely. So again, we just want to keep an eye on everything. Uh, while we want to char and blister some things, we don't want to really burn it up too much. And this is very evident why you want to really do this outside if you can or in a well-ventilated kitchen because the uh, smoke coming off of this 
especially the chilies, definitely. It's intense. It's intense, really intense. So those chilies are getting nice and toasted, guys. So I think what we're gonna do is probably fish these chilies off of here and then finish the rest of the vegetables that we're doing. Because these chilies are already dry, so they're not gonna take too long to char up. That one's good. Those look good. Yeah, I'm gonna, that one's looking nice. Oh, that needs a little bit more time there. This garlic, you can see this one's done. I mean, you could get, a, you don't need any more char than this on there. Yeah, they, they're looking great. And you can feel the sugars that have come out of there. They're caramely and they're actually a little bit sticky. Garlic has a surprising amount of sugar in it. You just can't tell because of all the other things in it. Um, so they've charred up really, really nicely. There's a little bit more time on the onions. The thing about a white onion too, is a white onion uh, versus a, of course, a sweet onion or a Spanish yellow onion, standard onion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna have less sugar in it than the other two. So it's, mm. gonna, it's gonna char a little less. Less quickly. Quickly. All right, so we're looking really good on these onions. I got a really nice char going on. So I think we're, good, we're in good shape. So I'm gonna shut this off now. And you wanna let this cool down before you start picking it up. So I'm just gonna get these onions off of the fire. You can take this and make a salsa out of it right now. It's yeah, good man. stuff. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna assemble the sauce itself, right? Yep, absolutely. So we got the beautiful charred, uh, uh, the chilies and the garlic and the onion, it's hanging out. So there you go. We've got uh, some uh, uh, whole peeled uh, tomatoes that goes in the saucepan. All right, we've got some orange zest, probably about, uh, about half an orange worth of orange zest here. We've got about a tablespoon of ground cumin. Yeah. And uh, we've got some Mexican oregano. If you uh, can't find Mexican oregano, just go ahead and use regular oregano, it's fine. And we've got about a nice tablespoon of that. This is beautifully fragrant. Yep. We got a cinnamon stick. You can use ground cinnamon if you'd like. About a teaspoon of ground cinnamon or just one stick is fine. Just uh, chuck it in there. We've got some orange juice concentrate. So we use about half of a can of the orange juice concentrate. And there you go. We've got some beef stock. You can use uh, beef uh, broth. You can use chicken broth or chicken, chicken stock if you want. You want something with some flavor in it. If you want to use vegetable stock, that's fine mm -hmm. too. Um, we have this orange that we zested, so we might as well put it to good use. So we're going to go ahead and juice the orange. Do you have an, uh, a preference for what kind of orange? Uh, does it matter? Just an Honestly, orange is an orange in no, this case? Uh, no, uh, whatever you, whatever's available is fine. Okay. You're good. Great. Uh, a little bit of salt. We've got about, uh, whoopsies, about a teaspoon of salt. Let's start there. And uh, I think that's it All after right. the vegetables. So the rest of these are vegetables. They're cool to handle now. Put these in. And then here we go. The rest of it is just going to go on the fire. And we're going to give this a nice simmer, soften all the vegetables up. Then we're going to take this and we're going to blend it together and make a puree out of it. It's going to be really, really beautiful. We're back on the stove. We've got about a medium high heat. We want to bring it to the simmer and let it simmer here for about you know, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. What we're looking for are uh, all the vegetables to soften, the uh -huh. chilies to soften up, okay. uh, everything to just meld together. And then that's perfect. Uh, keep this uncovered and then uh, don't walk away. You want to, you want to keep an eye on it the whole time. So give it a stir. And then we're good to go. We're fine. We can just kind of let this hang out, get it, get it simmered, and we'll be good to go. All right. We pulled the beef ribs uh, about, uh, we got it to about 170, 180 degrees. Perfect. They're perfect color. Mm -hmm. Got them wrapped back in the cooker to coast. Okay. Uh, our finished temps, 195, 200. So okay. we got some time to kill here. All right. So we're in good shape. All right. Well, while that does what it's doing, let's make the rest of that gravy. Excellent. So we've just put the contents of the, of the pot in here. Yes. We've got the cinnamon stick out. Yep. Um, and we're gonna put this, uh, with hot ingredients, always start your blender on low and just don't, don't 
jack it all the way up at first. You'll you'll fly the top everywhere. will blow out and then you'll it be, will. it'll be a bad shape. Yeah. We'll so start this on low and let it go for about what? About maybe uh, two minutes. I'm believing. Yeah. Okay. Right here it goes. And you can speed it up, but you got to start out slow. There's a lot of fibrous vegetables in that sauce. Yeah. Very important, you, you want to blend this for probably about two minutes. Okay, to get that good puree out of it. And that, that orange is coming through, the garlic, everything's coming mm. through, it's beautiful. It smells so good. Oh yeah. All right, should we take a look at it? Let's take a look at it, shall we? See what, it's, see what it looks like. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, the smell on that is just insane. Here, I'm gonna, there we go. Yep, now we just wanna strain it. Now you don't have to do this part, uh, but it really makes a, a really nice presentation uh, and a nice smooth sauce when you're doing this. Now you wanna do this stir through yep. on that? There you go, now we're talking. And then we're not gonna glaze the ribs with this, right? No. This no, is just this, gonna be for service. This is just a gravy that we're gonna serve it. Yeah, we're gonna serve it uh, on them, but uh, at the very end. Mm, fantastic. I am so excited to taste this. It's just, We've the, got, the smell, it fills the whole courtyard here, the whole patio, and it's amazing, guys. Okay, so our temperatures have gotten up high enough on the ribs. We're like a, in the 190s, late high, high 90s here. Yeah, perfect. So uh, let's check it for tenderness, right? Absolutely. One of the things I love about the Thermapen is you just test the tenderness as well as the temperature. Yeah, this is going in like butter. This is perfect. All right. So we're good. All These right. can come off and then we're gonna let them rest for about an hour. We've got a little foam cooler that we're gonna stick them in okay. and they'll and be that, in good shape. And that rest is important, right? Absolutely, rest is really important. It's part of the recipe. You need to let this meat rest. It's been doing its thing. It's been the cooking and um, it's really important to let it rest because if you start cutting it right now, all the juices are gonna run out and you're gonna lose all, lose all that moisture and you don't wanna do that. Okay, well, we'll get them in the box and we'll uh, come back in an hour then. All right. All right, we have had these resting for an hour. We've got some uh, some things to serve it with set up here. Let's, let's go for moment it. Moment of truth, let's huh? Say, yeah, moment let's of truth. It. All right, beautifully. Oh boy, oh, we've yeah. got gorgeous beef ribs, they are. Tender. Yeah, that rib is, that, that bone's almost falling out of there, even just when you move the paper around. These beautiful beef ribs, nice and tender. I'm gonna slice right into them. Oh yeah. And oh, the smoke ring on that is really, really pretty. Nice dark red smoke ring. Let's get these ready for, for eating then. All right, so we're just gonna put them on here. Now these will feed an uh, army of people. We're, these are big, they're bold, they're beautiful. I got some tortillas here. Mm. And some oranges. And then we've got our beautiful sauce, silky smooth. Gorgeous. You can of course make the sauce while the ribs are cooking and then just reheat it to, to, to serve. All right. Oh, that looks great. And a little finishing touch is a little cotija cheese. Oh, wow. And there you go. That looks amazing. I don't want to get my hands into this yet. It's so pretty. Let's, sure. let's, let's eat that one, shall you we? You got it. Let's do it. Sleeve in the sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's money. Yeah, that is.
That's good stuff. Okay. So wow. that is juicy. The acid from all the orange we put in there mm -hmm. is incredible. Um, uh, because it, it plays against the against all that fat and all that juiciness. Um, and I love, you're right, the, the earthiness of the char and everything. Um, I would eat that until I was not feeling well yeah. anymore, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that's just fantastic. Thank you for coming and showing it to Absolutely. us. Absolutely, I'm My glad pleasure. to have learned about this recipe and, and how you did it. Um, I'm going to have to try this. You know, this is a fun way to do like even a holiday meal. Absolutely. The citrus and the warm spices in there, they play really well for the yep. holiday. Yep. If you want to change it up, uh, instead of just doing whatever you've always done, try this. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. Yep. Um, thank you for being here. Thanks for showing us how it's done. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to subscribe. We'd love to uh, show you more of our content. Until next time, happy cooking from Thermalworks and Lene Oxley-Luke. Thanks so much, guys.